Hi, I'm Cheryl Brunette, and today I'm going to show you how to take a hank of yarn and turn it into a nice, squishy center pull ball with nothing more than your hand. When I was a kid, we wound all of our balls by hand, and I think it's a skill that's still really important to have. Why would you want to know how to wind a ball by hand when you can have it done at the yarn shop or yourself if you have a ball winder at home and get these nice cakes which sit still? Well, sometimes it just isn't going to work. This skein of yarn is a little bit fuzzy. It weighs over a half pound. It's all in one piece, and I could probably get it onto my Swift, but I, there's no way that my ball winder would wind all of this in one cake because it's, it would just be too big for it. And this wants to be a baby blanket, and I don't want to cut it just so that I can wind it. So this one I'm going to wind by hand. Um, let me put this back together here. It's so squishy. I love this skein of yarn. I have a, another white one just like it. It's, um, it was made in the Netherlands and it has a, a wool content to it, but it's machine washable. It's very sweet. Now this, this is the yarn that I used for the little shawlette that I'm wearing. I used three strands of this though. This skein weighs less than two ounces and is almost a mile long. For those of you on the metric system, it weighs 55 grams and is over one and a half kilometers long. It is a really, really fine thread. So I thought, I don't want to wind this by hand. <laughs> Look at that. It's like a thread. I, um, I'm going to put it on my Swift. Well, that didn't work out as well as I had hoped. Here's my Swift. It's not one of those nice fancy wood ones. And so those tiny threads kept getting caught in these little hooks that are on it. And it just, it would slide off. It's silk merino and a little bit of cashmere in it. And it feels really good. But I had one heck of a time trying to wind it from the swift to the ball winder. When I had to stop and cut it the fourth time, I carefully lifted the hank off of the swift, put it in my lap, around my knees. Now my knees were between it, but I didn't pull them taut because you don't need that. You just need to preserve the integrity of the skein so that none of these strands get over on this side because if they do, then you're really going to have a mess. So using your lap and your knees is one way to preserve the integrity of the skein. Another way is if you can enlist the help of a child or a partner or a neighbor, if they put it on this is what I did when we were kids. My mother always wound it, and I was her swift. I moved it like this as she wound. And then the other thing that you can use, which is really a very, um, it works pretty foolproof. Sometimes in your lap it can fall apart. But um, if you have a straight-backed kitchen or dining room chair, you can put the hank over that and then just wind it from there. But there are a few little tricks that I need to show you as to how to do it. And it's very useful. Let's go look. Okay, so here is the end of your yarn. It's coming either off of a skein. In my case, I'm cheating a little bit. I'm pulling it out of a center pull skein. And you can, I can wind it or you can wind it either in your right or left hand. But I just, I don't know, I'm used to doing it in my right hand. Lay it over your palm of your hand and leave a good end. This is going to be the end that will be the center pull. And then just start wrapping in a figure eight. Don't pull, you don't have to pull really tight. Let me get some more yarn here. Um, and when you get about this much, I mean, it doesn't matter. This is, this is quite a bit, whoops. We have a little bit of yarn barf here. Not too bad, it came undone. When you get to about here, then you slide those off your fingers. Now notice, I didn't do it too tightly or else it would be hard to slide off. And fold it in half. 
and I'm going to leave my tail hanging out. And now, wrapping around my fingers, look at, I'm wrapping around two fingers and my thumb. And then I start. Then you can wrap pretty quickly. If you, if you wrap quickly, then you're going to put some tension on this, whether you mean to or not, and that's what these fingers are for. They will keep this ball from getting pulled too tight. Then I move it around a little bit. Again, wrap around the two fingers and thumb. There's my thumb, there are my two fingers. Get a little bit of yarn barf. And you're just trying to make a nice ball. You'll get your hang of it. I don't go too far. See how you don't go over that necessarily. You kind of go around it. Then I stop, find another place. Here's a place where I would do it. And at all times, I'm winding over the thumb and those two fingers. Sometimes when it gets bigger, you'll wind over even more fingers. You can wind over three fingers. Now, when you're done, you know, let's assume that I've done this all the way. When you pull this out, it will come very easily. Look at that, just smooth as can be. And this is still nice and squishy. Now, why, why does it have to be soft like that? Well, when you use a ball winder, see the center of this spool? Look at the size of it. That's a good, probably inch, inch and a eighth, inch and a quarter wide. And when a ball comes off of that, I mean, it has that at its center, but notice how it closes in. It all come, goes back in just because you've put so much tension on it. So that's why you use your fingers. Here, this is, this is used, the width of this or the diameter of this, excuse me, the circumference of this is used to keep the yarn from getting too tight. And in this case, because if it gets too tight, if you've stretched it too much, then when you go to knit it, it's going to change your gauge because it will go back to its original form. Now, um, not every ball of yarn wants to be made into a center pull ball. These are the leftovers from that, the shawlette that I'm wearing. Isn't that beautiful? Look at the sheen to that. Um, and they, when I try them as a center pull ball, they just don't have the integrity. They fall apart before they get too far. So these three I wound as, I wound from the outside, I use the thread from the outside, and I put them in a Ziploc bag so that just the three threads came out of the corner. But notice, when I wound them, I didn't wind them too tight. They still have some, it still has some spring to it, some softness to it, so you want to do that. You don't want to wind it like it's, like it's sewing thread, even though this doesn't have any give to it. Um, this ball, on the other hand, is an Aran weight. This is, this is like most of this ball of yarn is gone. Here it is, there's the center pole. And yet it has enough, because it's wool, because it has um, body to it, it has enough integrity that I can have this as a center pole ball all the way through. And by the way, this is what's left over from the twined mitts that I made. And this is the next program that I'm working on. So look for that soon. I've been working on it for a long time and I hope it gets done really soon. It was, this is a fun project to do twined knitting. I've had my yarn and swift for over 30 years, but for the last decade or so I have wound most of my yarn by hand because the process teaches me so much about the yarn. I, I like it, first of all. I find it a very soothing process, but also it tells me is this yarn soft enough to be worn next to the, the skin? Is it springy? Is it, does it not have any spring at all? Does it feel like it's going to pill because it has a lot of fibers that are coming off of it? Does it feel like it would drape? Is it going to fluff up? Should I use a larger needle with it than I ordinarily had planned to use? Um, I always wind a ball of yarn with a project in mind, but sometimes just the process of winding it will tell me, mm, I don't think that's going to make that particular project particularly well. So um, thanks for joining me. 
And till, until I see you again, I want you to be brave with your knitting. <clears throat> and I encourage you to be more present with your knitting, with your materials, with your tools, with your time. Mae West said that anything worth doing is worth doing slowly. And I kind of agree with that. Bye. Okay. <clears throat> Oops, don't want that. You have to somehow... Oops, it's not going to look very good, is it? I have a little Kleenex back there. Well, I think... I don't know. I've had my ball winder and swift for over 30 years. Oops. But, you know, I didn't read my conclusion, and I'm going to do that right now. Okay, screw that one. That's okay. Let's go. How elastic, how soft. 